long range on a budget? Let's do this. Welcome to a new series, guys. What I'm planning to do this series is, I have a plan. I want to take my old hunting rifle and see if I can go from an old hunting rifle to hitting a target at one kilometer, 1,100 yards, all in one series. So that's the plan. So let's start off. Okay, so the rifle that we will be using for the series is, and don't worry, it is safe. The rifle that we will be using for the series is my old Ruger M77 Mark II chambered into 270 Winchester. This has been an extremely loyal rifle to me. Um, I have hunted with this rifle for around 5-6 years now. I've taken everything of, it, of the players game in South Africa from it, everything from Springbrook, Impala, Warthog, everything up into Kudu. Um, I've taken a lot of animals over it, it's always been loyal to me, it doesn't have that many shots through it, it has roughly around, um, I would have to estimate 400 to 500 rounds, so um, it's not a rifle that has shot a huge amount. But the reason I started to do the series is one of my best friends just started getting into long range. I said, you know what, I want to start shooting long range. So, um, I went ahead and I purchased a new rifle. But instead of buying a rifle for long range, I rather decided that I'm going to buy uh, myself a new hunting rifle and then change my old hunting rifle into my long range rifle. So I bought myself a Sarko in 300 win mag, absolutely amazing rifle. Um, but yeah. This is the rifle we're going to be changing into a long range rifle. Okay, so in this first episode, I'm going to show you guys a couple of little things that I bought for it. We're going to be fitting some of them. Uh, in the second episode, we'll hopefully have the scope by then. Um, third episode, we're going to do some hand loading. Hopefully, we'll get shooting in the third episode. And then from there on out, hopefully, fourth episode, we'll be reaching out further and further and further until we'll be hitting that one kilometer mark by the end of the series. Thanks for watching, guys. Continue watching and please hit that subscribe button. Okay. First up, problems that I have with the rifle that is gonna have to change before it can start um, being used as a long range rifle. Okay, so first thing is obviously I just got a cheap bipod for it. Um, it's a cheap Harris knockoff bipod, honestly. I have these on all of my rifles on my 270 Winchester, my 300 mag, and my 30 6 um, Absolutely love them, they honestly work great. Pretty much no difference between them and the Harris. They are great build quality and a heck of a lot cheaper. And I live in South Africa, so everything here is insanely expensive. So any place you can save some money, that will work. Okay, let's get started from the back of the rifle. First thing that's gonna have to go, um, hopefully we'll be getting this in by the next episode, but I'm definitely going to change out the stock on this rifle. Um, for hunting, it works absolutely amazing. Um, it's nice and lightweight because it's hollow, like most of your cheap synthetic rifles. Um, but yeah, for hunting, it works honestly fine. Um, when I was earlier this year, I was, had a trip up in Limpopo province of South Africa. Um, we were hunting some bushbuck and some warthogs, and I took this rifle along with me. Um, I used this rifle honestly, I dragged it through brush food in the truck, um, didn't even get a scratch on it. So the stock was fine for hunting, but it's not going to work for long range. Honestly, um, my first biggest problem with it is the forearm is quite flexible, which means that if I shoot off a bipod, it's going to have some contact with the barrel, and I do not want that because that's going to throw off my accuracy. Um, secondly, um, your hand is really not a comfortable position for when you want to lay down shoot. Um, off the bench, it's fine. But as soon as you lay down, your hand goes from like that position and to that position, you know, when you want to lay down. So, um, this is not going to work for it, honestly. It puts a lot of torque on your hand, and I need an adjustable cheek piece so I can get it. So, yeah, I just want the rifle up a little bit higher so I can get a proper cheek weld on it. And then, um, yeah, my biggest problem, honestly, is just um, the position of your hand. Then something that I'm not going to change out at the start, maybe a little bit better, I'll see how it works, um, is the trigger. This rifle is clear. 
Um, the factory trigger um, does not have any creep to it, honestly. Um, it breaks extremely crisp, which is the reason I'm going to keep it at the start, but it is an extremely heavy pull, um, and it's not adjustable. So, it's around 6.5 pounds, which is, as you can see, I can pull the entire rifle by the trigger, so um, it's an extremely heavy trigger. Do not like that. That's definitely going to change. Um, the scope's obviously going to change. This is just a virus full field 2 that I had on it, I uh, use for hunting. Um, scope's going to change. Okay. Let's get to the first thing that I bought for this rifle um, that I didn't plan on buying, but when I was in the store, I saw it and I was like, you know what, it's amazing price, let's get it. Okay. So, the first thing I got for this rifle is, and you have no clue what it says. Um, let me quickly tell you guys something. In South Africa, we are extremely lucky. Um, our laws are nothing like yours in USA. I don't know about other countries, but I know in USA specifically, um, suppressors are quite expensive to get because, first off, they are extremely expensive to begin with. You have a $200 tax stamp, and in South Africa, we don't have that. So, um, <laughs> to start off the series, I bought myself a suppressor for this rifle. Um, this is an African company that makes them. The company's name is Oryx. Um, I've heard a lot of great things about the suppressors and everything, so I'm gonna get this fitted. Um, it will be fitted by the next episode. So yeah, I'll include some photos of, um, on it uh, of the suppressor and everything. But the reason I chose this, um, the reason why I chose to put a suppressor on the rifle, I didn't plan. Um, I mean, the 270 recoil does really not bother me one little bit. I mean, I own a 300 mag, so um, and I'm used to seeing the 300 mag 50 shots non-stop, so. Um, the recoil doesn't bother me. The only reason that I decided to get a suppressor is um, for times I'm shooting alone, I want to make sure that I can spot my own hits. And um, the suppressor really wasn't that expensive and it looks cool and I really just like it. So um, that's the first thing we've got. Second thing, we've got some dies. Okay, these are the Hornady custom grade dies for the 270 Winchester. Um, I'm definitely going to be hand loading for this rifle. Um, I've been hand loading now for a year, year and a half. So um, I don't shoot factory ammo over ammo rifles anymore. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be hand loading for it. Um, so far, the ammo I'm shooting out of this rifle, so far I've only shot. Um, I've shot some 150 grain um, Federal Power Shock, just my bought for rifle. Um, because back there I wasn't reloading yet, so that's why I shot at the beginning, I handled quite a bit with it. Um, for the price, really not bad. Um, that's the thing that might surprise you guys, actually. Um, I mean, go up, look, Federal Power Shock, 150 grain, how much is it for a box of 20, you know, in the US or in your country or whatever. Um, I know it's cheap. If you think the equivalent of what I paid for it, now I'm talking about five years ago. I paid the equivalent for one box of Federal Power Shock, it's around the equivalent of $45, so... Um, yeah, South Africa is an expensive country. <laughs> That's why I reload. Um, so far, I've only been shooting 130 grain Hornady interlocks out of this rifle. Um, yeah, so far been my hunting round. Works absolutely amazing. Um, I shot a couple of animals with it, extremely, extremely happy with it. And that's one of the big reasons I also decided to use this rifle for my long range build. Is I know the accuracy potential of this rifle. This rifle with good hand loads can shoot three quarter ammo, and I know that. So, um, you know, I thought that would be the perfect rifle for me. So, um, I think I'm gonna finish shooting these hand loads. I have maybe 200. I have these Hornady interlocks left, so I'll finish shooting them and everything. And then I think my next rounds, the next bullet I'm gonna be shooting out of this rifle is probably gonna be the 145 grain ELDX. Or maybe I'll start shooting like a Nozla Akibond long range or something like that. Put down in the comment section what you guys think I should shoot like this. But yeah, um, I'm gonna go out now, get all these things fit and everything. Hopefully by the next episode, the scope will be in. You guys will be able to see what scope I ordered for it. And we'll definitely have the silencer fitted by then. And then by the third episode, we'll get shooting. So if you guys would like to follow the series, please click the subscribe button. Comment down below guys, I would really appreciate it. And then have a nice day guys, I'll see you again.